so oh, there see. we do see Matt Price uh, getting ready here. What is that on his hat? It looks like the Memphis Grizzlies <laughs> to me. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, but I couldn't quite see it. Yeah, they've, uh, they've changed their logo a few times. Yeah, and there we do see Frank Diaz. He's been a uh, pretty common face on our stream this weekend. Uh, we've gotten at least like three or four matches of his. <laughs> oh man, how many but, uh, times? He's always fun to watch. He, he's that's guaranteed evil tall small. Yeah, he just starts with it every game. I mean, <laughs> I'm convinced now. He just like begins the game, he puts that card out, and then he draws the rest of his hand. <laughs> he just wills it to happen. And <laughs> hey, it, it is one of your best starting Pokemon this matchup as well, because uh, you can start accelerating elsewhere. One of the biggest things for him is he's going to want to be able to play as many item cards as he can because he's going to be hit by Seismitoad's Quaking Punch by the next turn. Right, so right away, uh, Matt plays a Professor Juniper, discards his hand, opts to discard a Silent Lab. That's uh, actually a pretty good card in this matchup, because it can shut off things like Keldeo EX's Russian. Uh, the biggest weapon that this Evil Tall deck has against Seismitoad decks is the combination of Darkrai EX and Keldeo EX. Darkrai gives the Keldeo EX free retreat with Dark Cloak. Keldeo EX can rush in to reset Poison, uh, caused by Hypnotoxic Laser. Then you just retreat and go back to your attacking Pokemon so that a lot of the damage output of the Seismitoad deck is effectively neutralized. So interesting that he did decide not to go to the lab. I guess maybe he thought, well, I maybe want to get be able to dig deeper, play a card like this, like my Hoopa EX to set up first. Yeah, Hoopa EX, um, this was really one of the first decks to take full advantage of Hoopa EX. This deck plays nine Pokemon, all of them Pokemon EX. So anytime you can Ultra Ball for Hoopa, you are immediately set up. Yeah, Look one, at that. one Hoopa is just your deck. Like, that's everything. <laughs> it's well worth the one slot in your bench because it just helps you set up completely. Yeah, uh, you just grab a Seismitoad, a Keldeo, and a Shaman to draw more cards with that Scoundrel Ring ability. Uh, all of a sudden, you don't need any more Pokemon for the rest of the game. All you really need to find are your item cards, your energy to constantly use Quaking Punch. That's it. Yeah, and... Uh, well, you can't Quaking Punch this turn starting off the game. It definitely is a healthy start. Yep. So, looks like he did take those three Pokemon. Um, not sure what's going on here, but I'm sure we'll figure it out at some point. So, Matt is going first here. Uh, he does have the double colorless energy on the Seismitoad EX, but since he's going first, uh, he won't be able to attack. Right. So, uh, he's going to give Frank one opportunity to attack uh, with Oblivion Wing, play all the items out that he can, and uh, hopefully uh, accelerate as much as he can with something like a Dark Patch before they get shut off for essentially ever. I, yeah. I can't imagine Matt attacking in a turn where it doesn't use Seismitoad other than maybe a Chaos Wheel to end the game. Yeah, so we do see the first Hypnotoxic Laser going to put uh, 10 damage on that Evil Toll in between turns, uh, unless he can find a Burbank City Gym. And here we do see Shaman drawing away, uh, driving quite a few cards. I see a double dragon in Matt's hand. I can power Giratina, but I think Slice of Toad's going to be the MVP here. Yeah, and we do see Matt pass the turn after drawing through uh, quite a few cards there. Uh, now, Frank, like you said, this is going to be his one turn to really use item cards for maybe the entire game. So he's got to use this turn oh. really well. Uh, ops to just attach the energy to the Evil Tall. Uh, I got to think if you're Frank. You want to try to find a Hoopa EX of your own, use Scoundrel Ring, find the Darkrai and the Keldeo EX. Uh, that way you can get that combo in play right now. Yeah, the quicker you can get it before something like a uh, Silent Lab shows up, the better. And uh, how many copies of that does Matt actually run? Um, which card? Oh, Silent Lab. Just one, oh. and he tossed it right away. Okay, so I guess we won't be seeing that again. Uh, maybe something that he might consider, depending on how strong these are in the future. Frank? Not really grabbing any uh, other immediate draw, but guess what? Look at that. <laughs> you don't need a Hoopa when you can just find Keldeo and Darkrai together. Yeah, Frank's going to play that versus Seeker right away before Quaking Punch hits. Going to play the item card so he can have a supporter card for next turn. Uh, otherwise, his hand is pretty ugly. Yeah. Nothing he can play. No Darkness Energy in the discard, so he can't use Dark Patch. And uh, Oblivion Wing will do 30 damage, but no Darkness Energy in the discard pile, so can't get the bonus for that either. I'm sure he would have loved to uh, produce a little bit more here, uh, maybe get energy in the discard pile, play a few more items. Even though he does have the guaranteed N for next turn, ooh, there goes an energy. Uh, so he's really just stuck to Oblivion Wing right now to accelerate, and he has to hope he draws well off this N while all the item cards in his deck are going to be essentially useless. 
Yeah, a lot of players uh, have looked at this deck, uh, this Seismitoad Giratina deck, and, um, you know, Seismitoad EX is always strong. But a lot of the decks nowadays are not playing those crushing hammers. And I feel like a big reason for this deck's success is its energy denial. Uh, playing crushing hammer, playing things like zero sick to discard more energy. Uh, I don't think Matt plays any team flare grunt, but some versions do that. But the crushing hammer and the enhanced hammer combined with quaking punch, combined with hypnotoxic laser, that's what wins you games. And then later on, maybe Giratina EX swings in after you've discarded a bunch of basic energy with crushing hammer, and then chaos wheel locks out all their special energy. And you just win through energy denial more than anything. Yeah, and you can already see, Matt's got two double colorless energy seismitoad. It's not like he's going to be losing those energy. Uh, does Frank, he doesn't run zero sick or anything like that. I think we've established that. Yep. Uh, so these double colorless are locked in. He's got plenty of time to build another attacker if he wants to, like the Giratina. Yep, uh, I'm not sure what else Matt's trying to find here. I think Verbank City Gym would be what he wants to find, but doesn't find it again. Has to Quaking Punch for 50, but that's fine. It sets up that Evil Doll for a knockout next turn. Yeah, and I'm sure he would have loved to get that extra Poison Pressure. Maybe that would have knocked it out. Um, well, actually, now that Keldeo can just rush in and retreat, uh, not a huge difference, actually. All right, so here we see the end that Frank pulled out of his discard by last turn. So both players will shuffle in again, draw a card for each prize card they have, which is six at the moment. And uh, I'm sure Frank, he did not get to bury many of his item cards. He had a pretty short turn. He's going to be praying to not find many of them in this new hand because they are shut off from Quaking Punch. Yeah, he only played one item card. That was the Verse Seeker. So uh, there are a lot of cards in his deck he doesn't want to draw. No uh, more. He's probably playing upwards of 15 item cards in his deck, if not more. Ultra Ball, Item Compressor, uh, or, uh, sorry, Battle Compressor, <laughs> um, Escape Rope, all these things. Um, and yeah, I you see. can see his hand is littered with those cards. Uh, we saw Hypnotoxic Lasers, we see Versus Seeker. We just saw all cards that Frank doesn't seem like he can play. So all he has is Rush In with Keldeo, Retreat using Dark Cloak, but that's it. Dark Race just up here to absorb damage. And you can already see uh, just how strong the Quaking Punch lock is. And we're going to see the Head Ringer go on to the Darkrai EX at uh, Team Flare Hyper Gear, the Pokemon tool you can play on your opponent's Pokemon EX. Makes their attacks cost one more. I didn't realize it was Hyper Gear. Yeah. I've always just called it Team Flare Gear. <laughs> Turns out uh, they went in really, really hard in that technology. <laughs> yep, we see the Double Dragon Energy going on to Giratina EX. Hypnotoxic Laser on the Darkrai EX. Uh, I wonder if uh, Matt can find a Hex Maniac or something like that to shut off Keldeo EX's Russian. Yeah, it looks uh, like he's just going to go for the chorus. I think at this point, maybe he's just really hoping to apply some extra damage with Verbank City, something along those lines. Yeah. Or just in general, um, the bigger his hand can be, the more those disrupting item cards he'll have for the rest of the game. Some more hammers will do. Yeah, uh, if he can find Verbank City Gym, he'll put the Darkrai EX at 80 damage, which leaves it with 100. That's two more Quaking Punches or a Chaos Wheel from Giratina EX later. So uh, Verbank City Gym here would be a really big deal. And let's see, if he's got it, I'm pretty sure he would throw it down. Well, I uh, haven't seen him throw it down, so... <laughs> oh boy, Ultra Ball, and we keep going. I'm curious, actually, uh, what would he even want? He's, he's set on his full bench here with Pokemon. Maybe just something to search his deck, see what's left. Maybe burning things he doesn't want to see again. I guess you don't need that second Ultra Ball either. Yeah, I think he's just burning things he doesn't want to see again. Uh, discards the Ultra Ball and the Getsus, a uh, card that we've seen rise in popularity lately. Uh, you can use that to kind of destroy an opponent's hand that has too many item cards. Can actually be a pretty decent draw card in a Seismitoad deck because you Quaking Punch, prevent your opponent from playing item cards, then later you can Getsus shuffle in all those item cards they couldn't play, uh, and then you draw more cards, but then also those item cards go back into your opponent's deck so they can redraw them and keep drawing cards they can't use. So we did see a super scoop up, the old school art super <laughs> scoop up, but it looks like it was Tails. Yeah, so uh, not going well there for Matt, but I mean, he seems to be in pretty firm control at this point. Got the Quaking Punch down. Uh, the big issue for Seismitoad in this matchup is doing enough damage. Quaking Punch doing 50. Uh, slowly but surely, you can start knocking things out, but uh, that Keldeo EX rush in, gets rid of the poison, and uh, it really buys the Dark Ride deck a lot of time to do things. So here, Frank's going to rush in. Looks like uh, dropping energy on that Evil Tall. 
And you know, if he could find something, uh, just like another attacker at all, this would be fine. But since he doesn't, he doesn't even want to Oblivion Light. Yeah, and at this point, he's sort of uh, content just taking damage on the Darkrai. Uh, it's going to work okay. He doesn't need to attack with it. But uh, he is going to need another stronger attacker at some point. Yeah, and at this point, um, looks like Matt's going for another Hypnotoxic Laser. At three, he's used already. Those are your big source of uh, oh. damage on a bit. Oh, the this Hex This time Maniac he follows though. up with the Hex Maniac, All so right. this is going to leave Darkrai in a terrible spot. He cannot, for this turn, because Hex Maniac has been activated, rush in or use Dark Cloak. Right. Uh, now, Frank, his Darkrai EX does wake up, so if he finds a double colorless energy, he could retreat the Darkrai EX. Uh, of course, it does have a two retreat cost, so when Dark Cloak isn't uh, activated, well... You have to pay the full two. <laughs> Even if you have the darkness energy, you can't retreat for free. Can't say I've seen that scenario that often. Yeah, but uh, this is something Matt definitely has to do. You need both the Keldeo EX and the Darkrai EX to have that rush in free retreat combo. And if you take out a Darkrai EX, that's a really big deal. Yeah, this one's going down. Yeah, it looks like it. So Matt just going to continue slowly wearing Frank down. Uh, Frank has been unable to find really anything. He just keeps drawing item cards. He has a Lysander. He can't even really use that to stall for time because Matt has his own Keldeo EX with a float stone. He can always rush in and then retreat. And uh, it looks like, oh, well, if he wanted to, he can drop that double dragon energy onto the Giratina and get it ready for a Chaos Wheel to close the game. Just gives you a bit more damage to work with. Maybe a different kind of lock if things do get scary enough. But for now, uh, it's looking very great for Matt. Vervank City Gym in play even, although he has used a lot of his hypnotic lasers. But he does get a knockout while still continuing the Quaking Punch lock. Yeah, so the first Dark Rite EX for Frank goes on, and he draws the double colorless energy. Uh, one turn too late. Whoops. Uh, at this point, it looks like all Frank can do is Oblivion Wing, put a second Darkness Energy on Keldeo EX, and this is getting out of hand pretty quickly. Yeah, he really did get a terrible draw off that N. He hasn't played a supporter in a while. He's got a handful of <laughs> nothing. Keldeo, no, you can't even use Secret Sword. Take that. <laughs> uh, you're going to need a double if you want to do that now. Um, that Hyper Gear is now <laughs> attached. Yeah, Head Ringer going on to Keldeo EX. Of course, if Frank has a double colorless, he could Secret Sword for 50 still, but... Uh, looks like Matt's going to go for the Keldeo, bring it out, and uh, looks like he's going to start punching away with uh, Quaking Punch. Uh, interesting. He could have grabbed a knockout on the other end, but here he can apply pressure. Darkrai is no longer there, so Keldeo will have to retreat naturally, or Frank just needs to find another Darkrai right now. Yeah, that, that's kind of a weird play. I think eventually you want to go after the Keldeo, but uh, the Quaking Punch would have knocked out Evil Tall. Uh, Lysander there. Sure, you get the 50 damage on the Keldeo EX, but now Frank just retreats and uses Oblivion Wing and then gets another energy on the Keldeo anyway. Yeah, I, I think I would have liked to see the, the Evil Tall Small go down first. Yeah. He, he's getting the energy back. Yeah, so Frank's going to do Oblivion Wing again, another 30 damage. Uh, still struggling, has not drawn anything. Of course, you know, he said early on he would have loved to get that Hoopa EX. I'm sure he would love to see one of those right now. Oh, super scoop up Ooh. in its heads. He can reset all of this damage, picking up a toad back in the hand. He can throw up a new one, completely fresh, reattach the double, and it's like none of that ever happened. Yeah, super scoop up is an incredibly good card with size by Toad EX. Uh, we even see a crushing hammer to oh prevent boy. any kind of secret sword shenanigans. Um, Frank is on an awful footing here. I can't even imagine how he can come back. One yeah. of your best options to fight against a deck like this is getting a really big Evil Tall EX with tons of energy. Matt doesn't really run any instant way to counter a card like that, but uh, if Frank can't accelerate it, he didn't really take advantage of that first turn of items. He's left with sort of uh, weak attacks while he has to eat up uh, Seismitoad's weak attack with an incredibly strong effect. Yeah, I mean, so far Matt has drawn pretty much everything he's wanted, starting from the first turn. Uh, but, you know, that's going to happen kind of frequently with this deck. Uh, it's extremely consistent. Like you said, the Hoopa just turns into everything you want. And, yeah, Frank sees the writing on the wall, concedes. Matt Price wins game number one. 
he is one game away from winning this regional championship. And I don't know if you guys can hear that. Uh, at the end of a very, very long weekend of regionals, many go <laughs> off uh, to go to a local restaurant with their friends, grab dinner or something. But you can tell uh, Hep's got a local loyal following here, and they're all very excited to see him take that first game. Yeah, I'd say Matt definitely, he's been the underdog all weekend, but definitely uh, you look at these two players, you look at the resume, Frank Diaz has definitely the underdog in this matchup on paper, but taking game number one, we'll see if he can, you know, take another game. It's just one more and he wins the whole tournament. Yeah, it's the most common theme with Seismitoad. You get one, you get one turn. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Frank played one item. Yeah. That's it. He didn't find a battle compressor, ultra ball, uh, anything to draw cards, play cards. He just played an N off of a versus seeker and that was it. Yeah. And unfortunately for him, that just wasn't enough to cut it once it came to lock time. Yeah, the key is you have to get a bunch of Pokemon out first turn. Uh, after Quaking Punch hits, you can't play your Ultra Ball anymore. So if you don't get, say, Hoopa EX, Scoundrel Ring, grab a bunch of EXs, get them down, uh, you're going to struggle to draw into attackers as the game progresses. So uh, Frank in this game, I'm sure he knows this, but he needs to get more Pokemon down, get Evil Tall EX down, and then the Keldeo and the Darkrai as well. Yeah, he actually uh, would have ended up losing by getting benched out, actually, and not even providing the full six prizes. <laughs> yeah. If you run out of Pokemon, uh, you just lose. And it turns out that can happen when all you're doing is drawing item cards that you can't even play. Yeah, so uh, Matt Price taking game number one. We uh, we see just why Seismitoad EX is so good. Uh, of course, it's been dominating tournaments over the past year or so, and it's all because of that Quaking Punch attack it's as strong as ever in the expanded format. And uh, the big difference here, I guess, is I'm sure Frank will want to go first. Yep. It's once again, you get one, likely one. And what are you going to do with that one turn? Are you going to play a lot of items, start building up attackers, and put yourself in a favorable position to trade with Seismitoad with a strong Evil Tall EX? Or are you going to have a rough start and then start getting hit by Quaking Punch? Yeah, so uh, hopefully we see a little bit of a different game here. The first one wasn't very competitive. Uh, but you know what? Frank Diaz is a quality player. We'll see if Matt Price can take him down, but uh, I think we're going to head into game number two shortly. Uh, what do you think, Josh? What does Frank have to do this time around? Well, uh, he's got to play a lot of items. He's got to find a way to get the Eveltal EX powered up. We've seen how strong that is. Yeah, we didn't even see one that whole game. No, and uh, I'm looking at Matt's deck. Some decks, they'll run like the one uh, Mewtwo EX, even the Dedenne to knock it out. Uh, he has no real counter to yeah. one shot an Evil Tall EX. So if he can get that with a lot of energy, that's the dream. Yeah, his only real counter are uh, the Crushing Hammer and the Enhanced Hammer to keep those big Evil Tall EX at bay. If you can just keep knocking energy off of it, then it's tough for them to get the one. Hit knockouts, but uh, yeah, if that situation ever occurs where you just get that Evil Tall EX with seven energy or something like that you can evil ball for one hit knockouts yeah and uh, i'm sure that's what he'd love to see it's actually a decent start to start with the eveltal small but you need energy in the discard pile as well i'm sure if he can find something like a battle compressor that's a great card to start with in this matchup yeah and uh looks like matt did mulligan in this second game didn't have a basic pokemon in his opening hand uh so he had to show it to frank and then Ooh. Frank's going to start off with an extra card. All right, so I do not think Giratina EX is your ideal starter <laughs> in this matchup. When you have uh, an attack that you want to do off of one energy, I don't think you quite have time to attach two double dragon. Uh, to Giratina. That's something I'm sure we're going to want to see uh, picked up with a super scoop up early in. Yeah, that, or you could always do uh, the Keldeo EX with Floatstone, the Russian Retreat. That's usually your best way to switch between attackers. Uh, but yeah, starting with Giratina EX, not really what you want. And uh, on Frank's side, we were talking about how he would have loved to see a Hoopa. Well, he's got one already. Yeah, I think uh, he already has the Dark Eye. We'll probably see this go for.
uh, Kelio, an Evil Tall EX, and a Shaman EX. Those will be the three he grabs, but uh, man, Hoopa EX is just so powerful. And there they are. Yeah, look at that. Uh, it's such a great combination of EXs that you can pull. It just sets you up in one turn. Those are things that you used to have to fish out with multiple Ultra Balls or hope to draw into, but now a single Hoopa can get them all for you right away. Yep, so we see an Ultra Ball coming from Frank as well. Going to grab uh, that Evil Tall Small as well. So we'll have pretty much everything yeah. he wants. Uh, last game we saw Matt use uh, the Hoopa EX and he was set up right away. This game it's going to be Frank doing that. And here's the Battle Compressor too. He's already played uh, several more item cards than he did last game. Game in the entirety. Yeah, and I wonder what he'll opt to discard. I think Darkness Energy is an easy one. But you don't really want to get rid of three Darkness Energy with a Battle Compressor. Uh, he might get rid of one or maybe two, and then a couple item cards. Yeah, I think that's what I'd like to do. Um, get one, yep, there we go. Um, one, a Muscle Band, and actually an Evil Tall Small, looks like, as well. Yeah, it looks like it. Maybe just figures, well, in this matchup, I'm probably only going to get the time to run through one of these. Yeah. Um, interesting. To, oh, and also his bench is going to be completely full, too, once he set all this up. Yeah, usually you want to give up the, the one non-EX attacker, uh, the regular Evil Tall, and then you can do... Pokemon EX the rest of the way. They give up two prize cards. So uh, he's already got a double colorless energy on that Evil Tall EX. It could very easily be discarded by Ooh. an enhanced hammer, but hey, look at that. Got gonna rid go of his full hand. Maximum more. six cards here off that Shaman EX setup. He's going to be looking for a dark patch here. And I don't know if I see it. I think I see a muscle band. It's something burnable. Maybe an Ultra Ball too. Not the strongest draw, I think, uh, after going through all of these cards. You know, uh, you can get another Dark in the discard pile with that uh, Ultra Ball. But I'm sure you just want to play as many item cards as possible. This is definitely a better start than last game, but it definitely is to the best start either. Yeah, I don't think he's played a supporter yet, so he can continue to dig through his deck. Oh, uh, you're right. Oh, man, that Hoopa EX <laughs> feels like an EX, but it, it, sorry, it feels like a supporter, <laughs> but it's just an EX. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Ultra Ball doesn't take anything. Uh, if he had a Professor Juniper, he could have, you know, taken a Pokemon out of the deck if he felt like he didn't want it. Um, and then and there comes discarded, Juniper. but he looks through his deck and says, you know what, uh, there's nothing I really want to throw away. This is all stuff I want to keep, so uh, we'll keep the Pokemon in the deck and go from there. Seven cards deeper, and you can already see items you can get rid of. Hypnotoxic Laser, that's the thing he's going to want to play immediately. Yeah. Um, not only could it maybe leave Giratina in a weird spot, uh, just racking up some damage for a knockout later. Here's a Versus Seeker, getting rid of another item. Here he goes. Yeah, so Versus Seeker going to find, uh, looks like, oh, a Lysander. Uh, he may already have something like a Juniper in hand, looks like he does. But the big card he needs here is Dark Patch, and he doesn't find it. Uh, if he could Dark Patch, he would get an extra energy into play. You know, I think in a perfect world, he would find like two, three Dark Patches and just explode and play them all right away. But no, he just plays the double colorless energy. And uh, if Matt can pull off the turn one quaking... punch frank could be in some trouble yeah we did not see the incredible acceleration that this deck is capable of the darkness energy are in the discard pile but he just didn't find any way to really move them around the way you'd want to now the question is is matt able to start quaking punch on this turn he does have to move giratina ex in one way or another yeah matt plays his own ultra ball i assume this will go for hoopa ex as long as it's not in the prize guards and indeed it does scoundrel ring gets you three pokemon ex uh your first ultra ball with this deck should always just be Hoopa EX since it can get anything you would have searched for anyway. I'm thinking maybe Seismitoad, Keldeo, Shaman. Oh, and there they are. Yeah. So. And yeah, now all he needs is a float stone and he can get Giratina out of the way. Another, another doubled colorless for Seismitoad could be good. He actually did have to discard one here with the Ultra Ball. That could hurt. Yeah, I, I assume he has another one in hand if he's willing to just...
discard one like that. Uh, that's a, one of your precious resources. You need to try to find one right away. And uh, yeah, right away puts the double colorless energy onto the Seismitoad EX. Uh, Shaman EX set up, gonna draw a few cards here. Does he find Ooh, a float stone? stone? I see it, second card. So he can start the Quaking Punch lock. Not bad. Uh, gonna get the turn one Quaking Punch. So far in both games, Matt has been able to execute his strategy beautifully. And here comes Super Scoop Up. It is Tails, uh, just maybe looking for another way. Well, he knows uh, Frank has the uh, Lysander, so maybe it wouldn't hurt to get that Giratina out of the way. Matt also even has the Silent Lab option, although that would shut off his own Keldeo. It's there. Yep, so here we go. Rush in and retreat into Seismitoad EX, I would assume. And yeah, I'll be interested to see. Does he want to put down the Silent Lab and kind of lock the Darkrai in place? Yeah, it's, uh, yep. and he does. Now, this could get a little scary uh, with a Lysander coming his way, but it's not going to, or at least not guaranteed, because we see an N. Shuffling both players' hands into their decks, both are going to get a new set of six. Yeah, that is something interesting. Uh, usually you have the Keldeo EX and the Floatstone, and it's really good in a Seismitoad deck to stop any kind of Lysander. Uh, for example, say Frank plays a Lysander, brings out, uh, Giratina EX has a three retreat cost, and so you can't pay to retreat it, and uh, you have to pass the turn, um, and you can't Quaking Punch. Then Frank gets access to item cards again. Keldeo and Floatstone stops that. Anytime your opponent plays a Lysander, you just rush in and retreat. But now Silent Lab is there. That option opens up. Yeah, it's uh, it's an aggressive play, and we'll see what happens. I actually did see Frank was able to find a Verbank City Gym in his hand, so he could replace the stadium at any point on his next turn. Yeah, I wonder if he wants to, though. Like, if he has a Lysander, he would keep the Silent Lab out there. <clears throat> Lysander, bring out Giratina EX, and uh, hope that Matt misses a turn of Quaking Punch. Eventually, I think Matt will need to super scoop up this Giratina out of the way, at least while this Silent Lab is here. Yep. Uh, well, it looks like Frank has that AZ in his hand. That's a really good card in this matchup. Um, you know, you can't play item cards anymore, so you can't play things like Escape Rope, which Frank does play. But you can play AZ. That's there a supporter card. Just scoop that Darkrai right back into your hand. Uh, gets rid of the damage. Kind of wastes the Hypnotoxic laser that Matt played. And uh, now Evil Tall can come out and Oblivion Wing. And now he can start applying some pressure. Yeah, he needs to get these uh, as often as possible. As many energy as he can attach to this Evil Tall EX while he's chipping away with Oblivion Wing. Just so that he can start knocking out Seismitoads. Actually does decide to swap out the stadiums as well. Yeah, I like that move. Uh, get rid of the Silent Lab. I think eventually this is going to be in your favor, especially with that Oblivion Wing, putting the energy onto the Keldeo EX. This gives you the option to rush in and retreat. Uh, gives you back your Dark Cloak. So, yeah, I think that's a good option. You don't want to have your uh, stadium end away and you don't draw it, and you're stuck in a spot where you can't rush in and retreat. We see another Ultra Ball, uh, Matt opting to discard that Verbank City Gym. It's the only stadium that either of these players own left in their deck, so it's going to be stuck there for the rest of the game. Also a double Dragon Energy leaving him. I don't think he's going to be attacking with Giratina this game. Yeah, probably not. I mean, he does play three double Dragon Energy, so, I mean, if he still has two left, he can attach the final two in Chaos Wheel if he really wants to. It's there. I mean, he has discarded one double Colorless Energy, too, but he does have two Seismitoad ready to go. And when you run cards like Super Scoop Up, you can preserve that energy. He is running a little low in energy. I mean, he had to discard a double colorless early on. Uh, there's two double colorless in play, discarded a double dragon. So he's got one double colorless and two double dragon left in total. So we could see a scenario where he just kind of runs out of energy. But, um, you know, Frank doesn't run any Zero Sick or Team Flare Grunt to discard energy, so he'll probably actually be fine. We do see a monstrous Colrus for 10 on Matt's side. I'm sure he'd like to see some of those energy discarding cards to start applying some of that pressure onto Frank. Yeah, Enhanced Hammer would be huge right here. Uh, knock off that Double Colrus on the Evil Tall EX on the bench if he can find one of those. He does play two copies of Enhanced Hammer. Well, uh, let's see what he's got. He does have a full hand of 10, and he's mulling over the options right now. Yep. So once again, Matt Price is uh, kind of taking an early lead in these games with the quick quaking punches. Uh, plays another Ultra Ball, gets rid of Verbank City Gym and a Seismitoad EX. 
feels like he probably won't uh, be able to use those at any point in the game, so might as well throw them away. Yeah, we've seen him do plays like this uh, in the last game. Like, whoa, why would you grab a Giratina? It's one of those things. He's just trying to thin his deck out of as many cards that he doesn't want to draw later, and uh, even if he gets hit with a card like N, it's at least eliminating some options that you just don't want to see. Yeah. So um, I, I'm sure we'll see a Quaking Punch, but does he find something like a Hypnotoxic Laser? If he has one, does he even want to play it? Uh, Keldeo can just rush in and retreat. Uh, so, you know, if you have a laser, I think you just hold it. Next turn, you could play it in Quaking Punch for the knockout. So no hammers, though, at the end of all that, yeah. uh, despite drawing all those cards. And just your vanilla Quaking Punch for 50. And uh, fortunately for Matt, even if Frank finds a Darkness Energy for that Evil Tally X, he'll be a little short on the Evil Ball knockout. The math doesn't quite work out. So uh, that size with Toad X, there's no way it can get knocked out. Uh, I don't think there's really any way now uh, that he can't play item cards. Yeah, no, not on this turn. Um, he can accelerate to it once more, though, and just try and build up the big evil tall. The longer he can have it, the more energy he can attach to it, the more it's going to help him fight through these big Seismitoad EX with 180 HP each. Definitely. So, um, I don't know, what, what's uh, Frank going to go for here? Uh, I don't know, I, I know he's going to Oblivion Wing at this point. Did he could find a darkness energy to play, though? I don't see one. I see a double colorless. He could give another double to the Eveltal EX. Um, yeah. Although, yeah, there. then I guess it's there to be discarded easily. I don't know. It's rough. You want as many energy as possible. Yeah, that is a weird spot. Uh, I mean... Oh, Whoa, and an enhanced hammer <laughs> immediately. Uh, yeah, the, you can look at it two ways. You can. You don't want to miss an energy attachment, so you want to build up a bunch on that Eveltal EX. Um, at the same time... If your opponent plays two enhanced hammers at once and just knocks off both those double colorless, you never really have a chance to attack with them. So yeah, you can't get those back like you can with the darkness. Yeah. A big thing here is uh, can Matt find Hypnotoxic Laser right here? Uh, I don't think he can afford to not knock out this Evil Tall right now. If that thing gets to Oblivion Wing one more time, I think he's in some trouble. Yeah, uh, so trying to find a laser to pick off those last few counters. That's what he's looking for. Didn't have it despite drawing 10 cards last turn, but here comes another Culver's for 10 more. Yeah, off those 10 cards, you got to think he's going to find one of his three remaining hypnotoxic lasers. Uh, if he doesn't, though, I think Frank's in a really good position after that. Yeah, if he can do another Oblivion Wing, it's going to get that EX ready, and it's really going to keep this Seismitoad EX soft. So here we go. Colrus for 10 cards. Do we find four, that Hypnotoxic five, Laser? There it is. Yep. Six. And Computer Search. He's got plenty of options ready to go. Lysander as well. Uh, it's really setting Matt up to pull this out. Yeah, now fortunately for Frank, Matt did miss heads on Crushing Hammer. So he does have the one Darkness Energy on that Evil Tall EX on the bench. Uh, also has the Muscle Bane on it that'll stop any Head Ringer from being played on it. Um... Yeah, if I'm mad, I may just computer search and try to find a crushing hammer. Yeah, uh, if you can get rid of that energy on Evil Tall EX, I don't think there's any way for Frank to power it up in one turn. With a double cut of this energy, I think that's enough with Evil Ball to knock out this Seismitoad EX. Yeah, even a regular Darkness energy is enough. It'll hit for 120 with the Muscle Band, uh, already two energy on Seismitoad EX. So uh, any energy for Frank would knock out the active. Which makes me think, uh, would Matt rush in and retreat to the other Seismitoad EX so that he doesn't give up two prizes? Yeah, uh, that might be a smart play. That thing can get knocked out in one hit. You're going to force Frank to have a Lysander, and if he doesn't, then that's just another strange situation for him. Um, Matt could also find like a super scoop up, even heal this damage, or he can wait it out, get the other one more damage, and super scoop up that. Yeah, and uh, right now, Matt is just in control, it, it sure seems like. Oh, There's here the is hammer. this crushing Big hammer. Big flip here, and it's a heads. There it goes. The Eveltal EX now has nothing. Hypnotoxic laser as well, and that's going to be a knockout. And now Frank is left without any real useless or any useful energy on his side of the field. Yeah, Secret Sword is not exactly what you want to be doing. Uh, in fact, you don't want Keldeo EX active ever. Uh, it could stay asleep against the Hypnotoxic Laser, and it's your biggest defense uh, against Hypnotoxic Laser. Uh, Matt is just really taking control of the game. 
So was this the game where Frank in the early game discarded his other Evel Tall Small with yeah. the battle compressor? I almost wonder if he wishes he still had that uh, to continue accelerating energy. He doesn't have any real low energy attackers to continually chip away at Seismitoad at this point. Oh yeah, I'm sure he wishes he had it, but uh, I mean, even if he left it in his deck, there's no guarantee he would draw it. He can't search for it with Ultra Ball. Uh, looks like he's going to go for the Sky Return with Shaman EX though. Yeah, I mean, that's a start. You can push up... Uh, 30 damage at a time, you gotta work somehow, get this thing to fall. Yeah, and this is where uh, this Seismitoad Giratina deck can be uh, a little vulnerable. Uh, eventually, we're gonna Heads see... Heads on Super Scoop up. Oh, yeah, Goodbye that's, damage. That's a, a really big deal, but um, eventually we can see Matt run out of Hypnotoxic Lasers, and then he's just hitting for 50 with Quaking Punch, which means Frank will have a lot of time. He can always just rush in and retreat to these big Pokemon EX to take a lot of hits and buy himself time to just keep charging up a big evil tall EX, and uh, you can see big comebacks sometimes. And while I've seen that this uh, size, or sorry, uh, this darkness-based deck is maybe a slight favorite against this flavor of Seismitoad, you can see just how good Seismitoad still is when you can set up completely on turn one both games. Now Matt's going to Lysander, bring out evil tall EX, and Quaking Punch for 50. Uh, I, I think his plan is to soften it up so that later if he powers up a Giratina EX that already has a muscle band, he could Chaos Wheel and finish it off. Yeah, he doesn't even, need a, doesn't even need a Hypnotoxic Laser in addition to that. Yeah. And uh, now Frank's going to go for an N. Gonna, both players are going to shuffle their hands into their decks. Frank will draw six. Matt draws five. And uh, it looks like he's going for that Shaman EX again, trying to slowly wear Matt down with some Sky Returns. Yeah, I mean, you have to put counters on the field somehow. The only unfortunate thing here is he's not really accumulating energy because he has to keep putting it back into his hand. I'm trying to find what outs he has to maybe eventually knock out Seismitoads and have a chance in this one. Yeah, this is looking really really rough for Frank uh, at the outset. Uh, we felt like the Evil Tall deck had a bit of an advantage over this Seismitoad giratina deck but you know quaking punch is just so strong enhanced hammer has been huge crushing hammer is big and uh matt just has not missed a beat in either of these games we see rush in retreat sky return for 30 he can slowly deal these counters out unfortunately for him um that super scoop up heads for matt just erased so much damage yeah super scoop up is another one of those cards in this seismitoad deck that is such a difference maker uh, being able to completely heal one of your Seismitoad EX by just picking it up off the field is such a big advantage, you know? When players use oh. this kind of strategy like Frank is doing, slowly chip away with damage doing 30 and 30 and 30. Oh my gosh, look at this new hand. It's just <laughs> Dark Patch and Laser and, like, nothing else. Yeah, at least he found an energy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's your Dark, but Retreat, Sky Return again. You're dealing 30 a turn while your opponent is dealing 50 while also shutting everything off that you have. Yeah, but to get back to Super Scoop Up, I mean, Frank's going for this strategy. He feels like he can wear down Matt eventually just doing Sky Return over and over and keep sending up Pokemon EX with big HP, like Hoopa EX, like a Darkrai EX, um, and eventually get a knockout just by using Sky Return. But uh, if Matt hits another Super Scoop Up in the future, Frank could be in some big trouble. Yeah, I don't know any other way for him to really close this off without at least knocking out one of these Seismitoad EX. Here we go again. Rush in, retreat <laughs> for free. 30, 30, 30. Oh, here's a new attacker. That Hoopa was looking uh, pretty bad. Well, now here comes a Darkrai EX. 180 hit points. Hit through this. Now, toward the end of the game, Matt Price is going to have some pretty valuable Lysander targets that are just two prize knockouts around the board. But for now, Frank can absorb this damage and continue his strategy. Yeah, and at this point, Matt has begun powering up Giratina EX. Uh, I think he's going to need to use Chaos Wheel at some point to close out some knockouts. But uh, for the time being, Seismitoad EX goes up to 120 damage. Well, now it is, I guess, uh, two more attacks away from being knocked out. I would almost say that the Secret Sword is an option, but it unfortunately isn't. It's going to be 10 yeah. short. <laughs> there are no water energy on that kill, Dio. Yeah, so Frank going with uh, a little bit of an unorthodox strategy, just trying to sky return his way to victory. Don't see this very often, but uh, I wonder if it'll be effective. He is getting close to a knockout. He can rush in, retreat again, send out Shaman EX. This time he's going to send out the other Darkrai EX with no damage on it. <laughs> I mean, how many more EX can he throw up to absorb <laughs> damage like this? 
Yeah, I guess he's still got Keldeo. Yeah, he's got a few more. And I guess each of those uh, EX Pokemon can take one more hit. The question is, though, uh, whether or not they can take that hit when combined with a Hypnotoxic Laser. Yeah, and uh, my question is, will Matt find Super Scoop Up right here? He could erase all 150 damage on that Seismitoad if he flips heads on a Super Scoop Up. And uh, that would really be crushing for Frank if that happened. That would happen. be, yeah, game ending, I think. Uh, that's just too much damage, too much work Frank has dedicated in here with these Shaman Sky Returns for you to lose uh, 150 damage that you've placed. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. That would just be, like, the worst feeling ever. And it actually doesn't look like he has the Super Scoop Up option, so it's just oh. another Quaking Punch. We're actually going to see a Seismitoad fall. Yeah, and, um, you know, Matt could have rushed in and retreated to his other Seismitoad EX to avoid giving up the knockout to the Shaman EX. Um, but he decides not to do that. And Frank actually going to go in with the Secret Sword. Going to hit that uh, Seismitoad EX for 50 damage, take the knockout. Well, it's a start. It's not the most impressive attacker that you have in the deck, but it is uh, at least a decent amount of damage. But check that out. Giratina is ready for a Chaos Wheel at any point now. Yeah, and at this point, uh, I wonder what kind of strategy Matt's going to go for. Will he continue Quaking Punch? I think he should, and indeed he will. So Seismitoad is going to come out again. Does he have any Hypnotoxic Laser, any hammers, any way to stop Keldeo EX from doing 50 damage? It doesn't look like it. All he's got is just more Quaking Punch. Look at that. Each of those dice on Frank's side of the field, <laughs> each of those represents a separate Quaking Punch that has happened. 50-50-50-50. Yeah. Yeah, and that is the one weakness of Seismitoad EX. It is, uh, it's, it's low damage output. But uh, this was actually a really big deal for Frank, the fact that he's retained energy in play finally. It, uh, yeah, if this energy stays on the benched Eveltal EX, that's going to be really big. Yeah, uh, and, you know, just having the energy on Keldeo EX to power up for a Secret Sword is a big deal. It allowed him to finally use an attachment to power up Eveltal EX. The last, like, f five turns, he was just putting down a Shaman, using his attachment on the Shaman EX and using Sky Return. So he wasn't able to build up any threats. But now he's put himself in a pretty good position, I think. Uh, that Giratina EX will be scary a little later. Uh, we could see a, a situation later where, you know, Matt plays an N and then gets a knockout with Chaos Wheel. But, um, I don't know, Frank's still in the game. Yeah, and uh, he does have, like, the Eveltal EX as a knockout option. I guess the question would be, uh, it's maybe something where he could... Oh, boy. Well, wait a second. Here it comes up with the Lysander. Is he just going to do a Quaking Punch here, or is he going to nope. rush in, retreat, it's, and Chaos Wheel? It's time for Giratina EX to shine. The Chaos Wheel getting the knockout, but... This yeah. means Frank gets his item cards back. You know, Items are, how many Dark Patch do you think <laughs> he has? Can he power up a brand new, fresh Eveltal EX? Uh, he's got a double. All he needs is a double and a Dark Patch. Well, he can't he... play the double colorless energy because of Chaos oh, Wheel. Oh, you're right. Chaos uh, Wheel does lock you in one different way. Yeah, so no special energy, no Pokemon tools, or no stadium cards as well. But Frank can play Hypnotoxic Laser. He can play Ultra Ball. He can play Dark Patch. It is very easy for him to power up an Evil Tall EX and get a knockout here. Yeah, Giratina has... Does he have the cards to do it, though? Giratina has four energy attached to it already, so that's going to be an extremely powerful... Oh, wait, oh, second. No. Pulling up the Keldeo instead. Perhaps he doesn't have the option to knock it out. Let's see what he does here. Uh, he's going for the Hypnotoxic Laser. He's oh going to try boy. to keep the Keldeo asleep. The Prayer Flips. I mean, he can play all these lasers in his hand now. One of these might at least put him <laughs> asleep. Let's see. And that one, that one is heads. heads. All right, so Keldeo stays asleep. This could be one way for Frank to kind of break this lock. Uh, I see he does have a bunch of Dark Patch in his hand. He could go ahead and power up a big Night Spear if he wants to, but oh, the triple Dark Patch. Oh, boy. I'm guessing it's going to go onto the Dark Cry with 50 damage on it. Yeah. And we're going to see Night Spear spreading the love around. This is pretty crucial for Frank, uh, having this one turn of items after you have stockpiled them for so long. Yeah, and I wonder what he's going to go for. Uh, I mean, he could go for a Night Spear. Uh, if he does that and Keldeo stays asleep, it'll set up a potential game-winning Night Spear on the following turn. You know, get the four prize, knock out the dream Night Spear. But uh, it, a lot of that rides on Keldeo staying asleep, so yeah, it could be pretty risky. You know, if, if the Keldeo wakes up and then Matt has a Hypnotoxic Laser, 
He can then Chaos Wheel again, knock out Darkrai EX, and then Frank's in a terrible spot. Yeah, this this might be just leading up to uh, one of the most stressful 50-50s we've seen <laughs> over the entire weekend. I'm trying to think, aside from uh, Super Scoop Up, does Matt have any other way to move this Keldeo if it remains asleep? Does he run uh, AZ? No, doesn't run AZ, doesn't run any Switch or anything like that. Fully reliant on Keldeo EX or Super Scoop Up, so... Yeah, this will be a potential game-deciding flip. And he, he only runs three Super Scoop Ups. It's possible he's ran through most of them. Oh, boy. Frank is so going for the biggest Night Spear of the tournament here. Biggest flip of the tournament right here for Sleep. <sighs> Huge flip coming up. We're going to have a Night Spear. And where does Frank put the 30 damage? I think it goes on that Seismitoad EX. Yeah, just... Uh, oh, or it could go on Giratina as well. Yeah. Either way, uh, just trying to set up another knockout. Here's the flip. It's Tails! Tails. Oh. Keldia remains asleep. Does Matt have any way to move it? Does he have a super scoop up? No. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was just the poison damage. I thought he ended his turn right away. Oh, well, oh. he does have the super scoop up. Heads. Heads on the super scoop up. Wow. The crowd goes wild, and that, oh, man, that might be regional winning. I, I, I think it is. Uh, if he gets the chaos wheel here, if he has a hypnotoxic laser, knocks out the dark eye, all of a sudden Frank is left with uh, all just Pokemon that get knocked out by Chaos Wheel. There's oh, a man, there's Hypnotoxic, Hypnotoxic laser. laser. So Dark is going to fall to a Chaos <sighs> Wheel. And I don't think Frank has any additional offense here to fight it off. There's a crushing hammer just to add in some extra insult. Uh, he played a triple Dark Patch last turn. He can't do that again. Oh, man. I didn't know he still had a Super Scoop Up. Yeah, Frank took the ultimate gamble. Almost paid off, but the Super Scoop Up bails Matt out. Uh, picks up that Keldeo EX, and at this point, Frank looks to be on the ropes. Yeah, oh man, so the Chaos Wheel is going to remain, I think, victorious. Ooh. This is going to be the biggest Getsis we've ever seen. This could actually <laughs> be a dangerous Getsis. Uh, yeah, uh, Getsis one. one card. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> well, if his hand was full of items, he could maybe uh, draw too many and oh, then yeah. uh, <laughs> accidentally deck himself out. Unfortunately, uh, there's just, just one item in there. Uh, Frank, I think he's done. Yeah, the only way I could see Frank winning at this point is if he finds the last Evil Tall EX, uh, Dark Patch, a basic darkness energy, and powers up an Evil Ball for a knockout. Just two energy. Uh, I think that's enough for a knockout. So if he can do that, he could win the game. Uh, also, oh trying to define another... Uh-oh, oh, he's a going for it laser. I've heard this story before. And... and oh, heads, tails, heads. <laughs> oh, no. And now I'm not sure if Matt has another super scoop up, but that's all he's got to bail him. We're not done yet, folks. Oh, man, Frank, where's this energy going to go, though? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. He can't play special energy because of the chaos wheel. Oh, yeah, he can't. There's been too much chaos, Frank. Nope. That, uh, that double, you got to do a basic dark. Yeah. So Chaos Wheel was used. Can't play his special energy card. He does have a Darkness energy. He could go ahead and put that down onto Darkrai EX, power up a Night Spear. Uh, but yeah, I'm struggling to see how he takes all these prizes as he uses Shaman EX's setup. Of course, if Matt flips heads and wakes up, the game is over, the tournament is over. Matt Price wins the regional championships. If we have a Tails here, the game continues, though. Yeah, I think the only way he wins is just remaining asleep for the rest of the tournament. He did remain asleep there, it looks like. Whew. Oh, boy. Wow. Frank is living on a prayer at this point. Um, Hypnotoxic laser. Uh, geez, the I, only I just, what does Frank do after this, though? Uh, hopes that Keldeo remains asleep again and the math actually checks out. So it's at 80 now. Yeah. We had 110 moving into Frank's turn, 140 moving away. Another sleep fail would mean that Keldeo would get knocked out, moving into Frank's turn, giving him an attack target. Uh, so it's just a lot of flips here. Flip, Tails. and that's Tails. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So now, all of a sudden, we're down to just one flip left, and Frank can actually pull this off. He can even attach the special energy now because Chaos Wheel isn't a new effect. Yeah, something he could do is... Uh Maybe Quaking Punch? He could put down his Seismitoad EX, Quaking Punch, take the knockout. Uh, at the very least, I think he'll retreat into Seismitoad EX since he can at least take a hit from that Chaos Wheel attack. Uh, yeah, I guess my only fear there would be, uh, does Matt have a follow-up Lysander? Because then he could just win it with that. Yeah, but either way, I mean, if uh, if Matt wakes up, he's going to win. So may as well push up that Seismitoad EX if, uh, if Frank happens to have one. He and says pass. pass. This is a flip for the tournament. Poison One more. damage. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, Frank can't sure doesn't this. make it exciting. Oh, Tails. no, it's another sleep. Keldeo can't move. It's going to get knocked out moving into Frank's turn. Did I don't Frank just pull off a miracle? Oh, man. Flips on flips. I can't believe it. 
I think Matt's out of super scoop up for real this time. Ooh, a hypnotactic nice laser of his own. <laughs> Not as Maybe a, as Frank, a taste of Frank's own medicine. That would have been interesting. Now he's poisoned as well. Versus Seeker. What can we pull out here? Uh, looks like he's pulling out the Hex Maniac again, shutting off the Dark Cloak from Frank. Wow. Uh, uh, the big question for me is which Pokemon yes. does Matt promote here? Knocked out between turns. All Frank needs is a Lysander and... Oh, oh he well. actually needs a Lysander and a Hypnotoxic Laser to Night Spear the Giratina. He may be out of Hypnotoxic Lasers, though. He burned quite a few of them. Yeah, he did, just trying to get those sleep shenanigans going on. Another thing is Frank has one card in his deck, I think. He could actually deck out and lose that way. Oh, man, what an awful way to go after <laughs> after stalling for all this time. Yeah, I think uh, Dark Rye EX is really all he's got. That's 90 and 30. Does that add up really anywhere? Can that win you the game in any way? All right, this is it. Can Frank win the game right here? Uh, does he have enough damage? I mean, Matt promotes Shaman EX, has 110 HP. Uh, if Frank had a Hypnotoxic Laser, this would be over. But uh, I think he has burned through all of those. I mean, he could just... Laser, Night Spear, good game. Yeah, oh, oh it, there was a lot of excitement here, but I'm actually realizing, does he even have a way to take this last prize card? <laughs> this is the most exciting game we've seen all day, and of course, happening in the finals could not happen at a better time. Uh, what does Frank want to do here? He's counting out his cards. He has a Colrus. Uh, he could play that, shuffle his hand into his deck, and then draw only six cards, so it'll buy him a couple more turns. Um... Yeah, does he have access to N in any way? Um, that if he does be good. that, um, I, I mean, he could do like the Seismitoad, double colorless N, and try to Quaking Punch his way to victory. That is an option, since Matt would go down to one card. Uh, the other thing he could do is, you know, he could count how many energy Matt has gone through, and um, right. just Chorus, and hope Matt doesn't have a way to move the Shaman, and then Matt would deck out if he plays his Chorus. Well, there's the Toad, and there's the <sighs> N! This could be uh, the ultimate irony to finish it off uh, with his own Quaking Punch, giving Matt a taste of his own medicine for this turn. Gotta hand it to Frank. He's making things exciting at the very least. Uh, and gonna put Frank at two cards, and then Matt's gonna draw one. And, uh, see the retreat from Keldeo? So does Hex have Maniac. to pay the cost, yeah. yeah. And we're gonna see Quaking Punch. Now, at this point, Matt does need a combo of cards. He needs a way to retreat, and he needs a Lysander to win the game. Uh, oh, he just passes. Wow. So Frank, now he can win it right now. All he needs is uh, a double colorless energy. Just says Quaking Punch. Yeah. I mean, hey, that keeps the lock going on again. Matt, do you have anything that you can do? Uh, he's played through so many of his cars. Man, uh, you have to give credit to Frank. He has tried to find every small way, small ounce that he can stay competitive in this. I would love to see a game <laughs> three. I just can't believe it's even a potential possibility. Yeah, hypnotoxic laser is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about how feared it is and how, uh, oh man, once it comes back, look what it can do. Oh, it's Matt back. just concedes the game. I can't believe it. We're going to a game three. So that just, we're going to game three? <laughs> is that right? Is that real? Did Frank Diaz just Ugh. pull off the most ridiculous comeback I've ever seen? Wow. Wow. The robbery. <laughs> the pure robbery. No uh, multiple flips there <laughs> on, on the sleep flip. Turns out a single special condition can make it happen. And you can just see the look of defeat on Matt's face. How can it feel having the, uh, the jaws of victory <laughs> snatched away? Y you're right there. If you're mad, you are right there. You're three coin flips away from <laughs> winning yeah. this tournament. Can wake three up. sleep flips, one, two, three, tails oh. all in a row. Uh, I mean, uh, the first one was big. You know, yeah, Frank wait. got the first heads, tails, and then the super scoop up resets it. Dodged that. Frank gets the second hypnotoxic laser, heads, tails. Uh, I mean, let's not be cute about it. It was super lucky that he pulled that off. Yeah. But, you know. Frank found his way out. He had That's no other way out. He took his chance. He got it. And now he's got himself a chance to win this tournament. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm speechless. Yeah, that's that's what can separate uh, the best players from the great players. Yeah. Because they can find, well, hmm, I only have, what, a uh, all these coin flips. I need to flip heads <laughs> four times. What is that, one in 16 or so? Whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> um, well, that's my one chance at winning. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. I cannot believe that it worked, uh, but it did. And all of a sudden, we're seeing a game three. And, uh, wow, I, I can't imagine... Uh, what can Matt really do differently there? 
um, to change his game plan into game three. I mean, I know he's going to want to grab prizes as quickly as possible because we've taken a sizable amount of time between these first two games. Sure. But uh, I, I thought he really played that game pretty well. Yeah, you know, if you're Matt, um, I'm not sure what your mindset is going into this. I mean, you have the tournament right in front of you. You just got to attack one more time. Uh, as long yeah. as your Keldeo EX doesn't stay asleep like three or four different times, you win that game, you win the entire tournament. And, uh, you know, he's really been in control for both of these games, but uh, Frank hasn't been able to play any dark patches besides that one turn late in that game yeah, where he played the triple dark patch. So uh, we haven't seen Frank get a great start yet. Matt has come out the gates both games, uh, taken a big lead. So now this will be Frank's opportunity in the third game to finally get those dark patches played turn one in. Uh, at the very least, this will be an exciting conclusion to this tournament. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I would not either, Kyle. <laughs> I'm glad uh, we get to see one more game. I can't believe I'm saying this, but game three has just begun. Let's kick it over to the match. All right, there is Matt. Looks like he's uh, staying pretty calm, you know, given what happened <laughs> in the last game. Uh, uh, I would be mentally crushed at this point. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've been there before. Coin flips are uh, not fun <laughs> sometimes, but yeah, you learned that in uh, <laughs> perhaps a way even even stronger than Matt has. <laughs> it's all right though. It's just a part of the game. You accept it when you play the Pokemon TCG. Uh, it's a game of intense skill, but sometimes it just boils down to some coin flips. But it's just like the video it, game. That's you're, what makes it exciting. Yeah. Your attacks don't always hit in a video game. You got to play <laughs> some numbers. Got to play some odds, and sometimes the odds are against you. That said, uh, Matt Price looks like he's got a pretty respectable start. Seismitoad, Hoopa, set up again. Frank starting Shaman, probably not his favorite. Yeah, that turn one Hoopa is just so powerful. We see it, uh, I think we've seen it just about every game from Matt. Been able to get all those Pokemon EX and play. Plays band, his whole hand bank, down. We're going to finish Shaman. with a setup for six I cards. I mean, what else can you ask for if you're Matt uh, to start up the game here? That looked pretty perfect. Yeah, the only other thing you would uh, look for is a float stone at this point. And on Frank's side, you started with the Shaman. Um, uh, I usually would say that's not a very good starter, but Frank did use Sky Return five times last game. So I oh my gosh, <laughs> I I like my brain has blocked out an entire segment of that game <laughs> where there was all those Sky Returns, and somehow it just ended up being enough damage to keep him competitive once. Um, can't believe it. <laughs> Yeah, he had to he had to use Sky Return. He had to use Secret Sword with Keldeo. Yep. That that was the ugliest uh, comeback game I've ever seen. Yeah, those are the ugliest six prizes that have ever been taken in <laughs> Pokemon TCG. <laughs> but he took them. Now yeah. here's the question: uh, Will Frank be able to turn this around with another comeback victory, or will he go second place for two straight regionals in a row? Yeah, that's true. He did take second place last week. I'm sure he would love to get a victory this time. Uh, great finishes, no matter what. But. Yeah, uh, he would love to get a victory. Uh, he starts off with an Ultra Ball. Ooh, and a Battle Compressor this time. That's going to be big. Get some cards in the discard pile. And again, can he find Dark Patch and get some energy into play? Yeah, as many cards, either both items he can get rid of or Dark Energy that he can accelerate, that's going to be the difference between whether or not he can survive this Seismitoad attack early or he's going to have to play a late game. In his case, because we might actually be approaching time in Game 3 at some point, you're going to want to take as early prizes as you can. All right, so Frank taking a look through his deck, seeing uh, what is exactly in his prize cards this game. I think he has an Ultra Ball, and I think I saw a Dark Patch in his hand. Um, so this is actually a really, really strong start if he has Hoopa EX in his deck. Yeah, and it's possible you can miss that. I've seen him uh, sort of thumb through his deck options a couple of times. It is a one-copy card. You can occasionally prize one-copy cards. I actually, I didn't see that uh, glistening purple full art card. Do you? Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Actually, it might not be full art, but I, I didn't see any purple regardless. I think it's the regular art. Yeah. But, uh, I Frank, actually. <laughs> Frank doing the same battle compressor he did last game. One darkness energy, uh, one evil tall small, and one muscle band. And he's going to play an Ultra Ball here. It's like discarding a Darkness Energy and a Versus Seeker. And uh, this will be really telling what is in his deck. And I don't think Hoopa's in his oh, deck. He that, just grabs the Evil Tom. That's a huge setback. It lets you set up so well when you have it. We saw how much he struggled when he didn't have it in Game 1. Yeah, and here's a Dark Patch. So he does get the energy onto the Evil Tom on the bench. Hypnotoxic Laser going to poison that Seismitoad. Could be big if Matt doesn't find a Float Stone for his Keldeo. And going to finish it off with an N. 
I'm sure he would have loved to have that combination because with Hoopa, you get to draw with Shaman first before you even consider playing a supporter. But here he does get a fresh new six cards. It's not unreasonable that he could find a Shaman out of here to draw more and burn as many items as he can. Yeah, I think uh, Frank definitely wants to get a Darkrai EX on the field. Uh, hopefully Keldeo as well. And uh, the icing on the cake would be another attacker and an energy to retreat as well. Uh, he doesn't want Shaman EX in that active spot. It'll get knocked out by Quaking Punch next turn. Uh, he has had the luxury of the Keldeo Darkrai combo in both of his first two games, but if he misses it here, we could see some uh, really quick pain on that Shaman. That poison damage is going to add up quickly. And six cards for Frank. I don't see an energy card. Oh, wow. If the Shaman remains stranded, I guess he just has to succumb to a two prize deficit right out of the gates. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Also misses his energy attachment for the turn. That's not good. Oh, yeah, he only dark patched. All right, so Shaman EX, a uh, very bad starter in this instance. Uh, both active Pokemon are poisoned, so they'll both take three damage counters from the Burbank City Gym. Oh, Mac does find the Floatstone, so he can oh, rush man. and retreat. Uh, he's been able to do this every single game. He has the kill deal with the Floatstone, the perfect setup, the uh, Seismitoad EX with the Double Colas and the Muscle Band. His starts have been absolutely beautiful all three games. It really has been. It's a testament to the consistency that you can fit in when you run one of these uh, simpler Seismitoad decks. You don't have large evolution lines, just a couple of attackers and a few extra energy. But uh, look at that. It's just Hoopa EX. If you can find it, look what you can do with it. Yeah, you just find all your Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> that, turns that, out that's, that's, it. that's pretty good. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, Shaman EX, another one for Matt coming into play, it looks like, after this Ultra Ball, probably set up for a bunch of cards. Another double colorless energy on the field, so his Seismitoad are up and running. So uh, while Matt, he uh, did win that first game convincingly, second game lost to Heartbreak, he's still, once again, for the third time in a row, looking to have a commanding position oh. at the beginning of the game. <laughs> and Frank's head is ringing after that one. The double head ringer, yikes. Now both of his Darkrai EX's Night Spears cost four. Yeah, and uh, once Quaking Punch begins, getting those energy is going to take a long time. In Frank's scenario, it took him until uh, Matt finally gave up on Quaking Punch. I just don't know uh, if Frank's going to have a lot of time to retaliate here. He's already going down two prize cards. He's going to need as many energy as possible, probably on Eveltal EX once again, especially with both these Dark Rice sort of out of commission. So we do see the rush in from Keldeo EX retreating into the uh, Seismitoad EX with the Muscle Band. And we will see a Quaking Punch that'll knock that Shaman EX out in. Wow, turn two? Man, it's going to take two prizes. That's uh, extremely aggressive for a Seismitoad deck, for sure. Definitely. Very unfortunate for Frank not to even find a single energy card to attach and retreat Shaman, or even a double colorless where he could have bounced it back into his hand. Yep, just uh, not a great start for Frank. That's been kind of the theme of this series. Game one didn't draw much. Got pretty much destroyed in the first game. Game two is looking terrible again. Pulls the miracle comeback. Game three, another subpar yeah. start. Can he pull off some tricks in this yeah. one? Lightning would have to strike twice. <laughs> it could happen. Happen once. Well, let's see. Um, just trying to see what kind of options he's got. He does have uh, access to the size of a toad a little bit earlier this time. Yeah. Uh, puts down a size of toad EX, and then the uh, Oblivion Wing hits for 30 damage putting a Darkness Energy onto that benched Darkrai EX. Yeah, it's uh, going to come down to whether or not Matt Price can find himself a Crushing Hammer to discard one of these Darks. Yeah, here's a Hypnotoxic Laser. That could be big if he hits heads, but nope, it's tails. Still uh, some respectable added damage to combine with Quaking Punch, and that's all he's got. No hammers, so uh, Frank's going to have another turn to accelerate. Are there more Darkness Energy in his discard pile? Um, I'm not sure. I at most, there's one. I, I can't remember if there's one in there, though. That is a big deal, though. Uh, if he could accelerate an extra energy, that would be huge. Uh, otherwise, Frank's got to be looking for a double colorless energy, maybe start the quaking punch of his own, or he could Night Spear. Yeah, uh, that would be pretty good. So and he does find it. So the question is, what do you want to do with this double? Going in for the Night Spear, why not? you got a fresh Dark Rye. Frank is feeling aggressive, decides to send out that Darkrai EX, going to Night Spear the active for 90 damage, leaving it with just 30 damage left, uh, 30 HP left. You know, if Matt doesn't hit a super scoop up here, we could see a Lysander next turn and a four prize Night Spear. Yeah, that's one very, very scary thing about going in so aggressively already, is that a single super scoop up is going to remove what's been a uh, pretty straight, strong play. And uh, 
Also, Matt could perhaps uh, get an enhanced hammer and move that double colorless energy. That'll set him back as well. Yeah, now Matt's using rush in. I'm not really sure what he's doing. Um, you don't want to attack with the other Seismitoad EX. Then you would just take a full 90 on the Night Spear, and then your Seismitoad gets knocked out on the bench. Uh, okay, he can rush in, then put down Silent Lab. Uh, he wanted to put down Silent Lab to perhaps shut off Dark Rise, Dark Cloak. Um, but, you know, in case he wants to retreat to something else, yeah, might as well rush in. He didn't really have any additional disruptive tools, though. Uh, the cards that he draws off of, this is just a four-card N. Yeah. Uh, wow, that could really change the game. Let's see what he gets. Yeah, he wants to find Enhanced Hammer or something. No Hammer versus Seeker, Juniper, Super Ooh, Scoop boy. Up. Wait a second. And it is Heads! heads. 100, is that 150? That is uh, yeah. 150 damage erased. Oh, man. Uh, and while he doesn't have any easy way to compete with this Darkrai EX, he's going to get a uh, another Night Spear off. That's a lot of damage to erase, something you very desperately would like. Definitely. And uh, what an exciting draw. That was the last card he got <laughs> off the end. This has been uh, just an exciting game back and forth, down to the smallest of details that really have decided the game. There's the Night Spear. Uh, Frank did not attach it. Oh, no, he did. He got a double on the Eveltal and the yeah. bench. That's going to be very crucial. If Matt can't find some of his enhanced hammer and crush it. Oh, oh. All right. There's Draws it for the turn. <laughs> All right. Well, energy discard, volume one. Uh, if he finds volume two, that would be very good. Yeah, no, he actually decides to discard the one off of Darkrai EX. Uh, seems like he's fearing Night Spear more than he's fearing Evil Ball. Uh, in my mind, that's kind of a toss up going after. Uh, the evil tall EX on the bench energy could be better. But you know what? The Silent Lab, if Frank wants to attack and doesn't have another double colorless energy. Oh, Crushing Hammer, this could be big. It uh, looks like it was Tails bounced off the mat. Oh, no, oh, it was Heads. That's a Heads. <laughs> Matt, Matt looked so stone cold face. He was just like, uh, like, like he, he, I thought he would celebrate a little bit after hitting that. That's a huge flip. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the Silent Lab is going to come up big here. If Frank is stuck and doesn't find a double call this energy to Night Spear, then he'd have to pay two to retreat it. Oh, oh no, another super, 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 super oh. Oh. Wow. wow. Now that's one way to deny damage. <laughs> Heartbreaking for Frank, who probably has the best setup he's seen over the course of these three games in terms of a viable attacker. All of a sudden losing all that energy. Does he even have another double? Um, he's lost a few at this point. Yeah, I don't, I don't see another one in his hand. Uh, but it looks like Matt's making up for those sleep flips in the last game, getting a bunch of heads on these super scoop ups here in game number three. Quaking Punch hits the Darkrai EX. Uh, for another 50 damage, Frank does find the Keldeo EX. Yeah, no use until he can res uh, replace out that Silent Lab, though. Yeah, uh, Frank's going to play, it looks like, an N in this situation. Not going to retreat just yet. Uh, he'll try to find a Verbank City Gym so he can retreat for free with Dark Cloak. Uh, if he doesn't, though, I think we'll just see him retreat and then go into Evil Tall and Oblivion Wing. Yeah, I think he has a Darkness Energy to accelerate at this point. He's got a lot of double in the discard, but uh, let's see. There's the replacement stadium. Retreat, Oblivion Wing. Gives him a chance, and no, he actually doesn't. Ooh. Just doubles in there. That's actually a really big deal. Uh, at that point, it's almost... He almost wanted to discard the energy off Dark Rise. Sure, it's a target later for Lysander, but at least you'll be able to accelerate. Here comes the Getsis, and looks like it's only hitting a few cards, uh, but they are shuffled back into Frank's deck. Matt Price gets to draw a little bit deeper. Yeah, at this point, Frank is back in a tough spot. Uh, he does have an energy on the Evil Tall EX on the bench, but there's not enough uh, damage on the Seismitoad EX to get knocked out by an Evil Ball. Even if Frank finds another Double Colossus energy, uh, this active Evil Tall probably going to get knocked out. Well, yeah, it's going to get knocked out by Quaking Punch. And uh, at this point, Frank's just stuck in that spot where he doesn't have a bunch of energy in play to yeah. pose a lot of threats. That is awkward damage. Uh, even if he did have the double colorless, he would be leaving Sizer Toad at 170. And we've seen uh, just how much he's been punished by dealing some of these attacks that don't quite get a knockout. Yeah. That said, uh, there's Evil Ball just off the two energy, and we now have 130 on the Sizer Toad. That's right. Now, uh, can Matt hit... Another super scoop up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that yeah. I, if you can't get knockouts, it's uh, it's pretty hard to win the game. That said, he has gone through two. He only runs three. Um, we'll see if he can find it. 
Yeah, at the very least, I think Matt will rush in and retreat to his other Seismato DX. Quaking Punch with that one to avoid giving up a knockout. Uh, big card here is Hypnotoxic Laser. Looks like he's considering attaching to the Shaman EX. Uh, another thing is, I wonder if he would be okay with just sacrificing sacrificing the active Seismitoad so he can power up, say, a Giratina EX to get a little more damage out there. Yeah, I mean, you can also get into some of these weird scenarios. He's got 130 on him. If uh, Frank can find a double colorless energy, maybe he can throw up this uh, other Darkrai and apply some damage there. There's a lot of weird things, though. If Matt has a single Hypnotoxic Laser, he gets the knockout. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Right now it's just 50 damage from a single Quaking Punch and a basic Dark that Frank can put where he wants. Yeah, I think that goes on Keldeo EX. Uh, you just want to be able to get the rush in and retreat when you can. Uh, another Professor Juniper. Frank has been able to draw through his deck pretty well even under the item lock this game. Yeah, it's been much better. He has not just been clogged full of useless items. He's been able to get a supporter with each of his supporters. And once again, I do see a Juniper in hand, so if he does have to ditch a whole hand once again, he has the option to do so. And this is where Seismitoad does have trouble against this Evil Tall deck. You're doing Quaking Punch for 50 against Evil Ball for hundreds. Oh, well, not hundreds, but at least like 100 damage. Yeah. Uh, they're getting two hit knockouts. You're getting like four hit knockouts, unless you hit Hypnotoxic Laser. Then you can get a three hit knockout. Just not a favorable prize trade at all. So we do see a big Colrus on Matt's side. He does have a super scoop up here. Sure, he would have loved to have that a little bit earlier. But there's that Giratina like you were speculating. This at least gives him a larger attacker that he can use as long as he has another one of those double energies to attach to it. Yeah, he's using this as kind of the closer in this matchup. That head ringer, pretty big. It'll stop a Seismic ODX from using Quaking Punch later. Yeah, we, we saw close out energy. a game earlier. Yeah. Uh, Muscle Bane onto Giratina. Now Chaos Wheel can do 120 damage. Knock out some of those uh, 50 damage EXs that you soften up with a single Quaking Punch. Right. And here, I got to think we'll just see another Quaking Punch. Uh, hit that Evil Tall EX for 50. And we'll see what Frank can do from here. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm Oof. sure he wants to... Oh, another big, deep Juniper. Let's see what he gets out of it, though. Let's see, there's... Uh, right now, Evil Tully X is doing 100 damage with Evil Ball. A double colorless would get him up to 140. That's actually 10 short of a yeah, knockout. Yeah, I'm sitting there doing the math, recounting it. Um, one of the <laughs> crucial things that he... Oh, my God, not again. <laughs> Oh, wow. it's just like game two. We're seeing Secret Sword? What it's, is this? I mean, it, it is one of the least efficient attacks I've ever seen. Uh, three energy for 50. That would be good in the base set days. And <laughs> even actually uh, had the enhanced hammer discarded. Oh, but it does big sort hypnotoxic of... laser flip. Oh, and it's heads. Can I we think... see the same thing happen to Frank this game? Now that would be revenge. <laughs> and uh... Giratina's ready to go as well. And Ish. wow. Yeah, this is going to pick up in a hurry. Uh, I think we're going to see the Quaking Punch from Matt. Does Frank's Keldeo EX wake Extremely up? Extremely huge flip here. He doesn't have Super Scoop up to bail him. He gets heads, fist pumps, because he knows <laughs> that is a huge deal. Now he can retreat with Dark Cloak, and he can actually knock out Seisotoad EX and take a momentary prize lead. Yeah, this is a game Frank can win. Um, wow, because all he needs then is a Lysander to follow up past that uh, to knock out one of these Shaman or something. Yeah, I mean, he can retreat, Evil Ball for the knockout, uh, and then if he can power up that Night Spear, Lysander out the Shaman EX that has 30 damage on it already, he can win the regional championships just like that. Man, now, I, I am just so happy these last <laughs> two games have been incredibly competitive. That first game was a stomp, and now we've gotten some really exciting games to finish this out. Definitely. So Frank's trying to decide where to put his energy cards. Uh, he's already got two on the Dark Ride, the Head Ringer, will make nice spear cost uh, four energy. So if he has another basic darkness, maybe he puts it on the dark rye to try to set up for the night spear. Uh, I feel like he kind of has to do that in case a crushing hammer comes down. That, that would take away his night spear option. Plus, if he finds another darkness energy, he can just attach that in night spear. Yeah, uh, hammers are going to be a factor here, but for a brief moment, Frank actually has the lead. Just two prize cards remaining. If he knocks out an additional Pokemon EX card, he becomes the regional champion. This is uh, about as close of a game as you can get. Uh, crushing Hammer. Crushing Hammer. Oh, Tails. I was wondering, is there a world where you can hit double Crushing Hammer? <laughs> um, 
Now, let's be real. If that Keldeo remains asleep, does Frank just lose? Yeah, I think it's over. Yeah, he doesn't have any way to get around it. Oh, has, I guess uh, AZ. Yeah, the one AZ he would have needed to find that there. And, oh, Matt. Okay, so he opts not to play Super Scoop up there. He could have scooped up that Shaman EX with the 30 damage on it and prevented a Lysander. Uh, instead, ditches his whole hand without playing the Super Scoop up. Huh, uh, interesting. Also, unable to play an N... So, Frank, if he has, you know, the energy and the Lysander, he can become our regional champion next turn. And he's got a respectably sized hand. Uh, Matt can get a knockout here and take two of his remaining three prize cards, but all Frank needs, I guess, then to close things out would have been, uh, oh, man, computer search would be a Lysander. I don't know uh, if he has a double in hand or not. I guess we could see maybe another hammer, but Matt just might be out of opportunities. Here we go. This is probably going to be the last turns of the game here. Giratina EX comes up for the Chaos Wheel. Can Frank pull this game off? Needs pull off the miracle comeback after that game two insane comeback. One energy, one Lysander, and that'll do it. <sighs> I see a computer oh, search. I see a computer search, and I see a double colorless in his hand that he can't attach. What's left in here? Dark, dark patch. Couldn't that do it? Yeah, he just needs the Lysander. He has, yeah. uh, well, he has a double colorless he can't play. Right. That, there's too much chaos right now <laughs> for that. But uh, I almost, if he had the combo, is he either trying to be ultra careful here, or uh, does he not have and he's trying to be safe? He grabs, I think, just a plain dark energy out of the deck. All he needs is access to a Lysander. That's a single versus Seeker, and he's got it. He's retreating, retreating to the dark ride. Dark Rai's here. There's Basic energy. energy versus Seeker. Lysander wins the game right now. I think Frank's got it. He's searching through the discard pile. Is there a Lysander in there? <laughs> oh man. Wait a second. Is there a Lysander in there? Uh? Is he is he toying with us? Does he have it in hand? Wait a <laughs> sec oh Frank, stop playing with my heart. I can actually hear the crowd from here. Wait a second. He's got Koopa. a scoundrel ring. Oh boy, it's in deck. He can grab Shaman. Can he draw it with Shaman? Is it guaranteed? Can he get rid of enough cards to actually guarantee that draw? Or is it going to be something where it's going to come down to a little bit of chance? Wow. What is going on here? <laughs> Look at that discard pile. It's all down to this. So he's looking through. Is, is he not used the Lysander yet? No, but I do see it in... deck oh boy and i do see shaman in deck too and he's got an ultra ball that could burn a few more cards i don't know if he can guaranteed draw the rest of his deck or not it could just come down to a little bit of chance <laughs> i don't even I'm know waiting in suspense here can frank diaz pull off the win here i mean if he doesn't win here he's pretty much committed to using dark right ex um Guaranteed EX is going to Chaos Wheel for the game if he can't win right here. Yeah, he it's win this turn or bust. We're going to see who wins, and it could be either player, which is my favorite kind of outcome. All right, so Frank can find Shaman EX with the Scoundrel Ring on Hoopa EX's ability. Uh, he's just trying to look. If there's a Lysander yeah. in there, I got to think he can, you know, play his hand down a little bit. He's got the Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball for nothing, I can assume. He's got a five or so, four, five cards in deck. I think that's four. Uh, looks like five. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to tell, but it's definitely low. I know he can Shaman at this point. What, draw four? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, Hypnotoxic Laser. Wait a second. Can, can't he just Shaman and draw his whole deck at this point? Uh, looks like it. I yeah. think that's the math he was trying to figure out. So he's going to draw five two, cards off of three, this setup. Four. That's the whole deck. That guarantees the Lysander, <sighs> and he can play it, pulling up Shaman and knocking it out with Night Spear to close the game. I can't believe it. Frank Diaz is your regional champion. He can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be able to believe it? That no. game two win? No, I, I, I can't believe game two, and <laughs> game three didn't look that great either, honestly. I think um, Frank is still trying to figure out how he won that series. I uh, think he, he almost just, feels bad for his opponent. I mean, I, I would. I extremely mean, well-played match by both sides. Uh, wow, that, that there could not be a better ending to this tournament. Just somehow <laughs> willed the wins into existence. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess after you get second place once at regionals, you just get some kind of superpower.
that allows you to uh, win your next event. I'm sure uh, Matt will now enjoy that power that he can apply to his next one now that he's got a second under his belt. <laughs> what a fantastic finals. We saw some great play on both sides. Unbelievable. There were some tricky coin flips. I gotta feel bad for Matt.